Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraler with BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical trading algorithms and systems since 2003, over 20 years. And again, a uh, quick update guys, as far as the KISS systems, if you're following these, remember we update these just after the market. Go to, on the website, systems area, KISS STS tables. And today, for example, in the BPT basket, you can see Tesla has a new smart trailing stop, raised up to 261.50, went up about 10 points. Previous smart trailing stop was 251.40. And then uh, AVGO, new trailing stop as well, moved up from 834 to 855. And there's been 23 total stops on AVGO. Again, that's the basket. You can also see new longs today. There's four, close that. New longs, so four stocks went long today, brand new positions, flat, two stopped out, etc. Really cool resource. Anyway, let's get back to my newsletter. Again, I just did an extensive video update on Sunday, so I'm gonna try to keep this one a little briefer. Uh, just to give you a quick update. So this is state of the market technical review analysis for July 17th, 2023, Monday. This is our back end recording. Let's get this started. Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with breakpointtrades.com. This is the Monday, July 17th, middle of the month newsletter. Tonight's newsletter, as you can see, divided into seven major sections. Um, as far as the same general theme as we always keep. Now, as far as trade ideas, I only added a couple new ideas tonight, guys. And um, some things to realize, uh, big cap tech earnings, I have them all dated here. Tesla, Netflix on the 17th, so this Wednesday after the close, Google, Microsoft on July 25th, Meta, Jul July 26th, Amazon, the 27th, AMD, August 1st, Apple, August 3rd. Again, even if we get a little quick pullback in the market here in the short term, I do believe that, you know, market's not going to have any strong pullback, at least until after earnings on these major tech stops. Again, doesn't mean we can't have a quick pullback before. This is also options expiration week, tends to be volatile. Some quick observations, obviously the trend remains up. The mar market indexes all made slight new highs today. The S&P gained about 0.4%. Triple Q's NASDAQ gained 0.9%. Russell 2000 IWM gained 1.1%. Now, some short-term little observations. The VIX closed up today along with the S&P, which gained 17 points. Generally, they move opposite, so when they both move together, Sometimes you get a little reversal the next day, be aware of that. I can also count five waves up on IWM via a 60 minute chart. And there's some very clear negative divergence there in the 60 minute, 30 minute chart. We also have it to some degree in the other indexes. So be aware of that. Also high yield corporate HYG is lagging versus the other, uh, versus the S&P. Usually they move lock stock together. So short term, those are a couple little negatives in the market and uh, Let's go ahead and move on. Item number two shows the index sector table, what transpired today. Again, you can see the small gains for the indexes. Clearly the Russell and the tech area leading. As far as the major market sectors, as you'd expect, small moves on most of these, about a 50-50 mix of up and down. Uh, strongest sector today were semiconductors and technology. Banks also had a decent day and financials. Weakness in healthcare, drugs, utilities. U.S. dollars, you know, had a big sell-off last week. Today, it was down about 0.1%. Uh, cryptocurrencies are weak here. And commodities, all mostly to the downside, despite the dollar pulling back a little bit. Losses here really across the board. Crude oil down 1.8%. Natural gas down 1%. Copper down 2.25%. Corn, wheat, Sugar all down. Precious metals were just slightly up. I mean, paltry 0.03% for the GDX, 0.07% gain for gold. So essentially nothing. And then silver was down. And uh, bonds, kind of a mixed bag here with 10 years slightly down. The 30 year was flat. 
Next, item number three shows the economic news calendar, what's on the docket. And remember guys, on Wednesday we have Tesla and Netflix reporting. Tomorrow the 18th we have retail sales, business inventories, and a HB housing market index. And remember, we're, in, we're starting earnings season. Next, moving on, item number four. This image is taken from the website. Again, you go to the systems section, click on KISS STS tables. Remember, these are updated sh very shortly after the market, usually within about 10, 15 minutes or so. And uh, you can see today on the BPT basket, there's a... Two new stocks generated new smart trailing stops. New smart trailing stop generated on Tesla. It moved up about 10 points from 251.40 to 261.50. Nice jump. And AVGO, it moved up from 834 to 855. By the way, AVGO has been a monster. This represents the 23rd smart trailing stop. The KISS system went long on November 10th, 2022, and that position is up 80.7%. You can see the gains on these other ones. Amazon's up 30.6%, Apple up 38%, um, Meta, NVIDIA, of course, up a monster, 170-something percent, Triple Q's up 28%. That's from the um, KISS system entries. And uh, if you look at the new longs today, four new stocks went long. Two went flat. Again, very cool resource. More of you starting to use it. And uh, anyway, I'm happy with how this has all turned out. And again, we still have some other updates with emails and everything else here. Next, uh, image number five. So again, guys, regarding the market, as you know, the market this year has mostly been about these big cap tech stocks. Yes, we've had some sector rotation recently, but again, these have been by far been the huge winners. The uh, Mega 7 or Mag Magnificent 7, they call it. I think they're up like 100% collectively, which is just crazy. But here's the deal. Tesla and Netflix report on July 19th on Wednesday after the close. These are the KISS charts and uh, you can see where the current smart trailing stops are. We had a new one on Tesla today. And guys, this is a good ex example on Tesla, the KISS system. You can see the KISS system went long in May, had an initial smart trailing stop at 164.40, raised it all the way to 243, very profitable. It barely hit the stop there, hit it by a point or so. That's an example where, you know, one could have just uh, give it a little extra room, looked at a chart, stayed long. But, uh, you know, again, that happens sometimes in those fourth wave pullbacks. Sometimes the stop will get hit. Nothing's perfect. But you can see what happened. The system then went long about a week and a half later, and it already has three smart trailing stops in place. Um, Google reports on July 25th. Uh, same with Microsoft. Okay, you can see where the smart trailing stops are on those. Next, Trevor, item number six. Here's the other uh, four big stocks. Meta reports on July 26th. Current smart trailing stop is 283. By the way, there's a DeMarc 9 to be aware of short term here. Uh, Amazon reports on the 27th. Smart trailing stop 125.60. AMD reports on the 1st. And Apple, the big one, reports on the 3rd. Apple looks like it wants to make a new high here again. Current smart trailing stop, 185.90. Again, the nice thing about the KISS systems, guys, as you know, the market has climbed a wall of worry this year. That's what markets tend to do a lot of times. But the cool thing about the KISS systems is if the market continues to climb that wall of worry farther than, and higher than we all think is possible, the KISS systems will stay in the trend and catch it. If the rug gets pulled sometime soon, well, you got your smart trailing stops to keep you protected. Next, uh, Charber 7. So here's the KISS systems on the major indexes. No new smart trailing stops today. Again, Triple Q is still at 364. Remember, it went long on March 15th. It's up about 28% from that entry. And the uh, S&P at 4330. The Dow and IWM went long much more recent back in early June. You can see where those smart trailing stops are. 
Next, job number eight. Here's a five minute view of the S&P. Um, normally I don't start off with a five minute on the S&P, but I just wanna show you on the weekend I talked about this leading diagonal five wave pattern. Well, this since because we made a new high in the afternoon before the little pullback for the last 45 minutes, because we did that, obviously this wasn't a leading diagonal instead. It appeared to be just a complex ABC, X, ABC, which then allowed for another high, okay? Again, that's the thing about Elliott Wave. You know, usually you have multiple counts, and sometimes the one you're looking at it is not the one, or the one you prefer isn't the one that plays out, but the other one plays out. Because we made that new high, this is likely the pattern. But this new high did set up a divergence, and I'll show, over the, show that below when we get to it. Next. Chapter nine, here's a S&P Rinko chart. Just a nice clean chart. You can see that next big resistance level up just around the 4530 area, I think that is. You can see how it was previous resistance there in early 2022, around that March time frame. It was uh, resistance in late 2021, et cetera. So you can see when the Rinko took out that low 4200 area, 4220, it was previous support, resistance. Once we broke it, that opened the door to fill that area. Next, chart 10, here's the daily view. Again, no changes, another slight update today. We're getting closer to this potential channel. You know, recently we've been rallying off the 20 day moving averages. You know, we're still well above even just the five EMA. So we're obviously uptrending very strongly. We can, we do have divergences. Divergences are not a sell signal on their own. But we still have this divergence to monitor the MACD. We have a doji. Intraday, we have some divergences. So, you know, not looking for a big dump in the market, but we could have a little pullback here in the short term, perhaps. If we're going to have a pullback, I think it's going to occur, like I discussed on the weekend, before the um, make a cap stocks start reporting. Next, chapter 11, here's a zoomed in daily view showing the, ch the channel again. Next, chapter 12, here's a half day chart, shows you the channel as well. Next, chapter 13, here's the daily KISS system. Again, no changes on the KISS system. Remember, it went long back here in late March. Next, chapter 14, here's the four time frames. Now, a couple things here on the half day, we have this resistance cycles here. These cycles have been pretty good. Um, and we have a DeMarc 9. And on a 130 minute chart, we got a DeMarc 13 and resistance cycles. So again, if the market wants to have a little pullback here, this could be a logical place for it. Next, chart 15, here's a 60 minute chart. So we made that new high in the end of the day. You know, maybe it's, this is how I originally had this 60 minute chart labeled over the last few weeks. So maybe that's some sort of wave five of some sort. Maybe if we start pulling back here, we got an open gap down here that could be at an immediate target. Again, that new high did set up some MACD divergence and a little RSI divergence. Next, driver 16, here's a 60 minute view of SDS. That's the ultra short ETF for the S&P. Again, you can see the divergence here. So like I said, I took a little bit of short late in the day here with a tight stop. So, you know, it could be have an entry here, tight stop at the lows. If you're wrong, you don't lose much. You can see. Next, chapter 17, 30 minute chart. You can see the, uh, with that last high at 45.32, 43. Look how the MACD really lagging. It didn't even really cross. So pretty pronounced negative divergence there. We had a little divergence at that 45.27 high, and you see that produced a little pullback. But this divergence here is more pronounced. As you can see, that MACD has come back closer to zero. Next, chart 18, here's that 10 minute chart I discussed on the weekend, that potential ending diagonal. But because we made that new high, again, it negated that, which ended up being more of that complex ABC, X, ABC, okay? And of course, you can see that open gap pretty clearly here on the 10 minute. Next. Chapter 19, here's the triple Q's daily. What can I say? Just continues uptrending strongly. It's been above its upper Bollinger Bands now three consecutive days. Of course, just like the S&P, it rallied off that 20-day moving averages. 
in June and July. You can see the pronounced magnetic divergence here. Next, chart 20, here's the 60 minute chart. You know, a couple weeks ago we were showing this ascending triangle that obviously played out. Now again, this next high, new high, did set up some RSI and MACD divergence here. Next, chart 21, here's the triple Q's KISS system. No changes, 30, 364 smart trailing stop. Went long on March 15th there with an initial stop at 285. So been able to raise that stop um, about 80 points. Next, chapter 22, here's the four time frames. Similar to the S&P on that half day, we have the resistance cycle to mark nine to mark 13 on 130 minute. Next, chapter 23, here's the Dow testing this high here. Hasn't really confidently broken it, obviously. Next. Chapter 24, here's small caps, which led today. Nice rally back. Um, again, this pattern has played out just absolute textbook. We had this pattern drawn back in March and April when it was down here at the lower trend line. And it was calling for a move up near the upper trend line, and that has played out. And next, chapter 25, there's the weekly chart, the big coil. You know, who knows, guys, depending on what the world government does and the Fed and all this liquidity, can they eventually bust this thing out of this coil? We'll see. But for now, this upper area is resistance. Next, chapter 26, here's a 60 minute chart. And this is what stands out to me very short term. So here in the 60 minute, you can count five clear waves to the upside, right? Five clear waves, MACD divergence. Again, that doesn't mean wave five can't extend here. But this is a pretty clear divergence. We made that new high. So I took a little bit of short on this at the end of the day. You know, I could have a tight stop. Next, chapter 27, here's TZA. That's the triple inverse ETF. Obviously, you can see the inverse pattern here. Positive divergence, MACD divergence. You know, basically you have a MACD kiss, stochastic oversold setup. So it seemed like a low risk entry for a trade there. And that's really what trading is all about, guys. It's not always about tr being right. It's about identifying areas of low risk where you can take a position with a tight stop that has a reward that is quite a bit wider than your stop. So when you're wrong, you don't lose much. And when you win, you make, you know, three or four times um, what your risk was. So under those conditions, you don't have to be right most of the time. You could be right 50% of the time and still make money. Next, chapter 28, here's the VIX. Like I said, the VIX did close up today. Not much, but it was up with the S&P. We got a black candle here. Clearly, we got kind of a support here that it's holding on to. Next, chapter 29, here's high yield corporate. Up a little bit today as well. Next, chapter 30. Now, this chart is another little short-term warning. This is the S&P versus high yield corporate on the 60-minute time frame. Note this divergence here. Um, we have a higher high in the S&P, lower high on high yield corporate. So that is a divergence. Again, divergence can be negated, but this is pretty clear. Next, chapter 31, here's 10-year treasury yield down a little bit today, down about a half percent. Remember last week, it had a little double top here. Next, chapter 32, there's the daily. Now, it did bounce today, but where did the bounce stall? Right at that broken trend line and found resistance there. Again, you have some moving average support down here to monitor. Next, chapter 20, 33, here's the weekly. Remember last week, bounced off that lower channel support, which you'd expect. Finally, chapter 34, there's the daily. Again, just more of a consolidation day. This little downtrend line is your bigger resistance. Moving on to some market sectors, following up on ones from the weekend, here's XOK Technology. Again, made another new high today after this uh, three-wave consolidation coil pattern. We do have a MACD divergence here setting up for now. A couple things to watch are this RSI trend line as well. Next, Chapter 36, XLC Communications Sector. Again, hell of a move here. It's very strong slope, kind of extended. A little pullback here. Next, 
Chapter 37, FNGU, that's the uh, triple leverage DTF for the FANG stocks. Remember, a week ago I showed it in a coil and it gave a nice trade to the upside. Coils tend to uh, react to an upside break and an uptrend because generally they're a wave two or a wave four consolidation. Now, again, this new high is setting up a pretty extreme MACD divergence. It could be negated on a strong enough rally. I kind of doubt we're going to get a strong enough rally here to negate that, but we'll see. Next. Chapter 38, here's XLF Financials. Regained quite a bit of the down candle from Monday, up about 1% today. Next. Chapter 39, here's the 60-minute chart. Now, one thing to know, we, do, we did have a potential little fifth wave on that last high, so this little rally back today could still potentially form a little lower high double top here. Next, chapter 40, here's bank sector. Pretty good sell-off on Friday. It did, it's trying to hold this broken trend line of this coil as support for now. Another thing to monitor over time is the trend line on the 14 RSI. If that is ever reached, I would expect a pretty good sell-off. Next, chapter 41, transports. They've pulled back now to their nine EMA. Remember, they've had a hell of a run since we were bullish back in early June and mid-June. Next, chapter 42, healthcare. We're monitoring this coil setup. Today was just an inside day within Friday's candle. Next, chapter 43, consumer staples. We're also monitoring this coil. And finally, Chapter 44, XHB Home Builders. I mean, what can I say? Parabolic in Fuego. Just crazy move this thing has had is what it is. Remember, you can check the KISS systems, see what they're doing, where they went long. In fact, let me uh, let me do that here quickly. XHB. Actually... Interesting. I don't see XHB in here. I will add it to the ETFs, guys. Just for uh, our... We'll just see where it went long. It's HB. There's XHB. You can see it went long back in April. Um, and then it went back long again on... June 6th, current stop is at 78.90. Next, driver 45, XLE. Remember, this has been weaker, stalled last week at that trend line, had a bearish engulfing candle. Now we'll, can, now we'll see if it can find support at the lower area of the channel, moving averages. Next, driver 46, oil services. It was up today. Again, this sector has been so much stronger. This sector, you know, again, I... Did not look bearish at all on the weekend. Still looks very good. Next, Chapter 47, oil services on the weekly. Again, beautiful rally near that weekly uptrend line back in May. You're off the demand zone. So far, we've been struggling at the supply zone. Okay. Now, as I stated on the weekend, if this can eventually get through this supply zone, guys, it could melt up through this thin zone. This is a very thin resistance from 354 to 420, roughly. Look at the price by volume. This represents basically no resistance. But again, it's got to get through the supply zone first. Uh, maybe one option would be to, you know, do something like this, pull back, and then eventually break through it. But that's something, again, it's a weekly chart. It's going to take some time for that to play out, but something to just keep in your head. Next, move it. Charber 48, here's the uh, bullish percent energy index. Remember, this did get up into overbought territory. Um, it was an oversold territory back in May and early June where the buy signal occurred. So that's why XLE is struggling a little bit. Next, Charber 49, move it on to commodities. DBC down about 0.8% today. Next, Chapter 50, there's the daily back test in the wedge here. We'll see if it can hold this or not. Next, chapter 51, crude oil. Again, this 200-day moving average just continues to be a stickler. You can see it lost the 200-day moving average last year in uh, July, became resistance. 
uh, became resistance again in April and once again became resistance. Next, Jabra 52 copper, pretty good pullback today. Next, Jabra 53 uranium, bounced back a little bit. Again, nice rally off that demand zone about a week ago. Finally, Jabra 54, there's the bigger picture chart of the uranium ETF. I like this coil setting up. I think eventually it's going to break out of this in a big way. But again, this is a monthly chart. Each candlestick is a month. You know, and this, this has been consolidating for a long time now. It's going to take some time for this to play out. Next, Jabra 55, CCJ, uranium type stock. It was a trade idea last week that broke out. Today it bounced off its 50 or its 90 MA there. Next, Jabra 56, Bitcoin down a little bit. It's looking a little more precarious here. There's a support here at 29,590, I think that is. Uh, that's a big level. Next, Jabra 57, US dollar. Again, US dollar weekly chart that kind of looks like death here. There is the 200 a week moving average here, but otherwise there's the man zone below that. Next, Jabra 58 US dollar on the daily. Again, little pullback today. Still quite extended below its 90 MA. So anytime we could see a rally back to that, kind of like a reversion to mean. Next, Jabra 59, there's the tradable ETF UUP. Again, to me, this kind of looks bear flaggish. Maybe we get a Maybe one option, we get another quick move down and then we rally. And that could affect the precious metals. Let's look at those. Jabra 60 gold, again, just slight pullback on here today. You can see it's been stalling at the 50 day moving average. This is still a possible pattern that could set up this right shoulder, higher low of an inverse head and shoulder pattern. We'll see. Next, Jabra 61, there's another chart of gold. This one has the GDX GLD ratio. Again, same analysis applies here. Next, Jabra 62 silver. This is the weekly chart. I showed this on the weekend, but um, we do have a potential large inverse head and shoulder pattern here to monitor. Okay. But again, it's going to take, if that ends up being the pattern, it's going to take a time for that to play out. And uh, your neckline would be about right there. Next. Jabra 63, there's the daily chart. Again, you just had an absolute textbook three-way of ABC into the 200-day moving average. That was a good area to go long. You also had a confirmation on this RSI 14 trend line break there, basically in late June. Next, Jabra 64, GDX. Again, I talked about this extensively on the weekend. You know, last week we broke out of the channel. We regained the 200-day moving average. We had a trend line break on the 14 RSI, a back test. So nice little confirmations there. Today, we bounced off this 50-day moving average. Again, it remains to be seen if we pull back more and form this right shoulder. For a true right shoulder, you need probably a good week or so pull back. They may be down into this area. This is too shallow for a right shoulder. If it just breaks up, then it's not an inverse sudden shoulder pattern. But something to watch. What If this were to pull back like this, let's say do something like this. And then this, what would cause that? Likely, as I just discussed above with the dollar, a quick pullback in the dollar and then a rally uh, reversion to mean would likely cause that. And then once that reversion to mean bounce in the dollars over, then you get your right shoulder and then move up. Anyway, just one option. Doesn't have to play out that way, but something we're watching. Next, Trevor 65, GDXJ, same look here now. This is a this 39 area is a big resistance. It's been in support, resistance multiple times. This looks more positive. Looks like it's trying to flag, perhaps. You can see the ratios really let up. And again, this had clear five waves to the downside. Next, Chapter 66, the bullish percent gold miners index. This is kind of like a system. Remember, this triggered last week over its nine or its eight MA there. You can see the last couple signals, buy and sell signals. Next, following up individual names, Jabra 67. So some stocks in this sector continue to outperform. EXK, it's a silver stock. This was a monster, up 4.4% today. I mean, this really outperformed. Look at this move. Look at that move off that demand zone. Just beautiful. 
Next, Chartbridge 68, Mux, another one that awesome. Just a very awesome chart. Easy trade, cleared that trend line early last week. It was a good easy buy. And it has moved up here nicely on good volume. Congrats for those of you who, take, who took that. Next, Chapter 69, SILJ, that's the Silver Junior Minor ETF. Again, similar look to some of these others. This one, you had five waves to the downside, a clear falling wedge, MACD divergence, symmetry break. So, you know, right now it's struggling up a little near the 200-day moving average. Love to see a pullback in this. Next, Chapter 70, pause. It's a silver stock, one that we've had on the list. This falling wedge clearly played out. Next, Chapter 71, AEM. Similar charts, another gold stock. That wedge is obviously played out. Again, it remains to be, to be seen if these are flagging or if they're going to form a right shoulder of a head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulder. Next, Chapter 72, AU. This has been a nice rally off the 200 day moving average, as you can see. And finally, let's move on to trade ideas. Chapter 73, CLSK. Finally given a little bit back again after such a move from that five resistance. Most of you are probably out of the stock. Had a heck of a move. Chapter 74, TSE. This is one that broke out last week. Didn't make it to my target. Measured move near the 200-day moving average. Pulling back, but the volume pullback is on light volume. So this is one I'm looking to buy on a pullback. Again, a lot of times you break out and retest the previous breakpoint. So watching this one again. Chapter 75, PRMW, long idea from a couple weeks ago from the wedge, moved up, went sideways. I've been stating it looked good like it was going to pop again, and that's what it's doing now. Next, Chapter 76, rig. Awesome long idea from June from that coil, broke out to a new high. Look where the bounce occurred today. At previous resistance, which we broke, became support. Classic technical analysis. Driver 77, DO, energy stock, bounced off the 9 EMA. Hell of a trade from that coil that we had back in June. Next, Driver 78, FI, it's been on the list as well. Nice move from that trend line break back in June. Driver 79, finger, pulling back here finally. 9 EMA again. The long was back off that 435 area. Next, Chapter 80 IDXX just continues to power away. This was on the watch list back in June. Next, Chapter 81 RVLV. Long idea of mine early last week that gave a trade. And again, quite honestly, guys, look at the volume patterns. Look like it's just trying to flag here. May run again. Next, Chapter 82 Disney. Woke Disney. What can I say? Ugly chart. Broke down. Looks ugly. Next. Chapter 83, ATEK, nice continued move. Chapter 84, 9, up today again off the 9 EMA, maybe trying to flag. Remember, this was added back to the watch list back in uh, late June. It's had a nice percentage move. Chapter 85, there's the 60 minute chart. Again, you can see just textbook. Coil pattern in June broke out. ABC three wave pullback to the demand zone where it rallied, and another ABC pullback here recently. Next, Chapter 86 run solar stock broke out today. Chapter 87, here's a new one XP coiling. We had this as a long idea, also back in March, April. And look at that move since, but it's coiling here again. Could be a fourth wave type coil. Chapter 88, last one, EXTR. Here's a coil flag set up as well. All right, guys. So those are the only two new ones I added. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. Quick check on futures. ES futures are down about two points. So things are pretty flat tonight. All right. We'll see what happens the rest of the week and tomorrow. Have a good evening. Take care.